Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. Today, Jerry Foster is training us on how to get known, get found, and get paid like never before. Jerry, I've got a couple of opening questions for you so that we can get to know you a little bit better at a personal level. With uh, all the new tools and the technologies that are available, uh, how does, uh, how does uh, strategic branding fit into an entrepreneur's lexicon of, uh, of, of tools to help them build great businesses? You know, um... I read recently that there's 1.7 billion websites on the World Wide Web, 1.7 billion, and that number is growing. And so you have to do all you can to stand out, get noticed, and be remembered for offering something unique so that you can be, then be desired. So when you think of it that way, the visuals alone are not going to do the job. Okay. Jerry, are you going to get into a little bit of your background in your talk? I sure will. So I'll ask you a question that is outside of your background. It's really a question about feasibility with those 1.7 billion. Do you truly feel that a small business owner can have a big brand one day, perhaps even a household name brand like Xerox or something along those lines? Do, do you really feel it's feasible? Oh my God. Some of the greatest brands on the planet started off in a garage, a living room somebody's kitchen, a dormitory, started by one person, maybe two, maybe three, who had a dream, who had an idea to put something out into the world that would be magnificent. And Roger, that's not limited to products because there's five types of brands. You can brand a company, a product, a service, a nonprofit, or yourself as a personal brand. But if you've got something that people are going to find invaluable, then you've got every reason to go ahead and turn that into a big brand. And you get to decide what big means, Roger. See, for some of your members, having a big brand may be about having a nice six-figure income, which is fine. But there may be some of you who want to have a seven-figure brand. You want a multi-million dollar brand. Maybe you want to have a billion dollar brand. That's not pie in the sky. That is not outlandish because it's been done by too many people who simply had that dream to put something out into the world that would be hard for the world to ignore that would make their brand name unforgettable. Ah, I'm inspired already. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Part participants, <clears throat> if you have questions, please type them into the chat and I'll pose them to Jerry during his talk. Uh, secondly, uh, you will be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours. But take notes anyway, because taking notes will increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Jerry, are you ready to rock the stage? I am ready to rock the stage, my friend. I just switched the camera because that other one, my webcam was blinking. So I think this would be better. Then the stage is all yours. Take it away. Well, first off, I just want to say that I am hyena happy and peacock proud to be here. When Roger invited me a couple of months ago, I said, absolutely, you can count on me. And you have no idea how much respect I have for this group, for your country, and for the people of Vancouver. I've done a lot of work with small business owners in Vancouver over the years, across Canada as well, in Calgary, and also up in Ontario. And so I just first want to acknowledge Roger for inviting me, because I'm an American, obviously, I live in Los Angeles, and so for me to be allowed into your country, which is something, as you know, we're not doing right now, <laughs> is really great. So the first thing that I want to share when Roger asked me to come and speak to you, I thought about the current times that we're facing. And the one thing that I will say to all of you is that this is not the time to put a mask on your business. By no means should you put a mask on your brand, nor is it time to social distance, what it is that you had to offer. And so like Roger said, I'm going to share with you how to get known, get found and get paid like never before through the strength of your brand. Now, I appreciate what Roger said about me and 
Roger and I have this kind of bromance going on now. But if I may, with your permission, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about myself and how I got here, if that's okay. And this is me when I was a kid, a teenager. I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Back in the proud days of when Detroit was the fifth largest city in the United States, the auto industry was booming and something called Motown music was blasting. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with the Motown sound, because it could be music that maybe your parents listened to or your grandparents or friends, whoever, right? But it's that kind of music that lit the fuse within me on this whole thing called What's a Brand? I'm holding an album by a very popular four, a, po a very popular Motown group at the time called the Four Tops. Have any of you heard of the Four Tops? Or maybe you've heard of other Motown artists such as Smokey Robinson, The Temptations, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, all oh, Marvin Gaye, don't get me started now. And what I'm standing next to is something called a record player. So for those of you who don't recognize what that is, that is how we used to listen to music at the time. And so I share that story with you because the Motown brand was the first brand that I was exposed to as a kid. And it lit the fuse for this thing called, what is a brand? I mean, what is this whole thing about having a brand? And I literally became obsessed with the idea of finding out all I could about branding. And so I went to college in America at the University of Southern California, USC. And for those of you who may have heard over the last couple of years, it hasn't been too great for USC because of the college cheating scandal. And so I'm happy to share that I actually earned my way into USC. My parents didn't have to cheat my way into USC. And I attended the USC Marshall School of Business and I majored in marketing with deep study and branding. I got two degrees, a bachelor's degree, an MBA degrees. I graduated with honors a whole nine yards. And that's me standing next to my proud mom on graduation day. So everybody send me in the chat box, go, oh, isn't that nice? And when I came out of USC, I went to work for Procter & Gamble. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with Procter & Gamble, P&G, they literally wrote the book on branding. And so I, would, I worked in strategic branding at P&G in a field called brand management, and I was helping them grow some of their laundry brands, the Cascade laundry detergent, Aero liquid detergent, and on and on and on. And I also worked in the citrus juice and drink industry. And I also found the time to be an adjunct professor of branding, marketing, and advertising for 10 straight years at four major Southern California universities that you see on the screen right here where I taught 10 straight semesters, evenings and weekends. Now, here's the thing. I started my brand development and training company full time in 1985. Yes, this is my 35th year doing this work. I did start my company when it was the dawn of the PC, believe it or not. I remember when the personal computer hit the stage, dinosaurs were roaming the earth. Yes, I did start when I was 10 with a lemonade stand, okay? I'm a 35-year-old baby boomer, everybody. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, okay? And what I'm most proud about is that over the last 30-plus years, I've actually had the opportunity and the blessing to help over 100,000 small businesses from 600 different industries with their branding. And this is my drum, this, I call this my drum roll slide, everybody. This photograph was my very first branding boot camp that I conducted in Orange County, California. This picture was taken in February of 1986. And notice, notice the big hair that everybody had, the 80s look. Roger, I had the big old mustache and I got the big glasses. I got a chalkboard over my one shoulder. I, I got an overhead projector in the room. You guys remember overhead projectors? 10 people showed up. I think I'll go on to the next slide. So why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because I read an article once which said that here in America, the average American changes their job or career 10 to 15 times in a lifetime. 10 to 15 times in a lifetime. And in my case, I've never done anything else but branding my entire adult life. And if you go back to college, 
is what I studied and majored in over 30 plus years. And I'm proud to say that I get to do what I love and I love what I do and I do it the way that I want to do it. And I've got a lot of accolades and I've been able to meet people like Roger. And I share that because there are a lot of people out there who say they do branding. And when you talk to them, you find out, oh, you do logos. Oh, you do design. Oh, photography. Oh, your idea of branding is to shoot videos and put them on Instagram, right? No, no, no. That's called pseudo branding because that doesn't give you a whole brand. We'll talk more about that. And so I thought it was important that you understand where my heart is and why I do this work. And the reason why I accepted Robert Rogers invitation to come here tonight. And that is because I have dedicated my entire adult life to supporting owners like yourselves in creating an exceptional brand that can make an exceptional difference so that you can live an exceptional life. And my specialty is working with small business owners. And I primarily work with those who offer expertise, any kind of service, any kind of skill, talent, or ability, who want to take that and create a big brand and a strong message that sells so you can excite, delight, and ignite your market, even if your budget is small. That sound good? And usually when I speak at these types of meetings or whatever, even within my own company, I primarily work with those of you who are typically in one of three places. Place number one, is that some of you do not have a brand yet. You're putting out services or you're putting out skills or you're putting out a product and you wanna create a brand. However, most of the people that I work with have a very good brand already, an amazing brand, a, a beyond excellent brand. However, they want it to be even stronger. That's called, write this word down, that's called rebranding. Maybe some of you have heard that word before. And so what so many big companies do all the time is that they're rebranding, which means you are re-engineering, reimagining, revamping, revitalizing what you currently have to make it as strong as possible, especially going into 2021. And so I do a lot of work in this whole thing called rebranding because like they say, you don't know what you don't know and the worst thing to do is that like you do know what you don't know, what you don't know is not that important because we live in a brand driven world. And then the third type of person that I work with is a person who has a brand that's just not working. It is stale, stalled, stump, stuck and in a slump and it just needs to be fixed. So if there's some of you, you don't have to send me a chat right now. But here's my point, there is nothing more important than your brand, nothing. It's your reputation. It's the experience that you are offering your customers, your clients, whichever word you want to use. It's your legacy. And the thing that's so incredible, and I'm sure it's true here in Canada, just like it here, like it is here in America, we live in a brand, a brand conscious world. You turn on the radio, you, you go online, you go on television, it's all about your brand. You, you, talk, you, 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 you hear celebrities talk about their brand. Everything revolves around this thing called your brand. And so make no mistake about it, one of the big choices that each of you has is to either go brand or go bland. Uh, you, did you catch that, Roger? You, you can either have a brand or be bland because it's the brand conscious world that we live in. Think about it. We grab a shopping cart. We go into a supermarket. If we're, if we're looking for the, let's say, a laundry detergent and we want to get the brand that's known for getting out dirt, what brand do most of us think of? Put it in the chat box. Tide, right? And if you're washing dishes by hand and you want to make sure that you have young looking hands, what brand do you think of? 
Yeah, Palmolive or or uh, or Colgate, Ivy Liquid, right? If you don't want grease on your dishes, you think of a brand called Dawn. Now, why is that? The importance of that, write this down, is that people associate something with that brand name. We love our brands. We appreciate our brands. Not only from the stores that we shop at or the clothes that we wear or the, where we bank and the schools we put our children into and where we vacation, where we vacation, it's all about this thing called your brand. And it's been shown that the most successful companies in America, if not around the world, are brand focused companies, which means that they're putting something out into the world that would be hard for the world to ignore because of the magnificence of that brand. And that brand has a lot of elements that I'm going to teach you tonight that make it up. So I'm not here to sell you anything. As Roger will tell you, I have a servant's heart. I'm a giver, not a taker. I'm here to sow into your life because there is nothing more important to me right now than you the brand called you. Does that sound good? Send me some love, everybody. I reply, I respond to energy. You can you can send me a chat right now. By the way, I should mention to you that there's a few housekeeping rules. Try to listen as carefully as you can. I'm going to try to keep it toned down. Sometimes I have a tendency to get excited, but I'm going to try to be mellow. They call me the brand and evangelist, okay? And the other thing is this, um, you should know that spontaneous applause and chats, and I love you, Jerry, and things like that are perfectly okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> so what's the key going into 2021? My first bit of advice to each of you is to have a transformation. Write this down. I must be the honey and not the fly. Mm. Be the honey and not the fly. We all know how tough 2020 has been for everybody. We've all experienced something that the world has never seen before. But the bottom line is this, honey attracts, flies chase. One of the biggest opportunities for all of you, and I really appreciated being able to hear your introductions and what it is that you do in this incredible community that Roger has built. And one of the things that impressed me, because I was listening to each of you through, through the hearing and the lens of a brand, what I heard from each of you is that you are up to big things. You're about making a difference. You're about putting something into the world that adds value. And the thing about it, though, in the midst of 1.7 billion websites in the World Wide Web, there is a problem. The problem is in the midst of all of that overcrowded uh, highway, that overcrowded, what do they call it? This whole thing called the internet, it's getting harder and harder for most small business owners in general, particularly those of you who offer services to do what? Stand out as opposed to blending in. What I've discovered through my work is that standing out is getting harder and harder for so many people. And I'm sure it's no different than it is for some of you. You're good at what you do. You're talented at what you do. And yet, do some of you feel that at times that you're invisible? Like nobody's paying attention to you? I know I've had moments where I felt like that, where I felt like I was part of some giant choir and all around me or all these other members of a choir. And I'm saying, listen, I can sing, notice me, pay attention to me. Here I am, notice me. Have any of you ever felt like that? That here you are and you sacrificed 
and you've dared to be different by jumping into this game called entrepreneurship. And when you take a look at your hard work and the sacrifices that you've made and you wonder how come I'm not getting back from life as much as I put out into it, because your brand has to be the thing that drives that going into next year. And then on top of that, false perceptions occur. Have any of you ever come across a situation where you just by telling people what it is that you do for a living, they slot you, they put you into a box, they come up with their own crazy interpretation about what it is that you do for a living? For example, I'm a real estate agent, I put you into the real estate pile. I'm a financial planner, I put you into the financial planning pile. I'm a life coach or another one of those, I put you into the life coaching pile. And so one of the main reasons, according to the Wall Street Journal, for example, that branding, watch this, is the number one business building tool, particularly in North America, if not America, is because it allows you to seize control over how people perceive you. Because unless you brand yourself, somebody else will. And the way that they brand you may not be the way that you want them to perceive you. But when you decide to be the honey, when you decide to put something out that would be hard for the world to ignore, that allows you to leave your footprints, the moment you make that strategic decision that you're going to attract and not chase in 2021, then all of a sudden you get to have a conveyor belt of clients and customers coming to you. If that's of interest to you, say, oh yeah, just put it in the chat box, say, oh yeah. Now remember, I'm from I'm Motown, I gotta settle it down, Roger, I'm getting excited already. Because the idea is to create your conveyor belt for 2021. Gary, so you're, what I, you're getting lots of oh yes, but before the oh yeah loses the question, I need to ask you, uh, this is from Hemant, did the approach to branding change post COVID-19 when we do not expect businesses, especially small businesses, to bounce back the previous performance, at least for some time? Absolutely. Yes, it did. And Roger, if, I, if it's okay, can we hold the questions to the end? Uh, yep, if that's what okay. you want to do. Yeah, because I want to bless you all. I put this presentation together just for you, and I have a short time to get there. And, and also, Roger, you're going to mess with my flow, dude. Okay, I got a flow here. Come on, Roger. Smile, Roger. Okay. I'm smiling. So, uh, participants, would you likewise hold your questions to the end? And um, Jerry will announce when he'd like you to type them into the chat. Thank oh, yeah, because I do want to do a Q&A, but let me get through this. Okay, right now, I need everybody to just, you know, let your, just let it all come in, right? Inhale it in and spark your imagination. Because I want to share with you six proven, what I call why personal brand strategies for your 2021 conveyor belt. And when I talk about a personal brand, I'm be, I was told by Roger, most of you are solo practitioners, solo professionals, right? Independent uh, uh, consultants, whatever. In other words, you have expertise. So most of you want to create a personal brand. Now I'm going to go as far as I can. However, if some of you want to have a brainstorm session with me, or if you want me to muscle test your brand, I created a very sophisticated online tool that allows you to muscle test your brand to see how strong you are in 25 strategic key areas. You can text or call me and I'm on WhatsApp as well. So let's get into it. Strategy number one, have a brand, not just visuals. What do I mean? A brand is more than a logo. A brand is an experience. To have a brand does not simply mean having a logo, nifty design, colors, fancy graphics, words, visual elements, all the aesthetics, all the window dressing, along with videos, nice photography, blogs, business card, banners, etc., and any other visual references. Because those alone, write this down, please, will not give you what's called a whole brand. You want to have a whole brand, which means that you're putting something out into the marketplace 
that gives people compelling reasons to choose you over other alternatives. And so when you think about it, if all you focus on is the visual stuff, that alone is not giving someone a reason to hire you, wouldn't you agree? I mean, a great example of that would be Coke and Pepsi. I doubt that the Coca-Cola drinkers prefer Coke because it's in the red can and the Pepsi people because it's in the blue can. It's what's inside the can that counts. So my question to each of you is, what's inside your can? What do you want to be inside your can? Hmm. Roger, I remember a year or so ago, I shared that to a big audience. I was speaking at an event and, and I said another example of that would be if someone gives you this great gift. Think about it. You got this great gift. It's got all the fancy wrapping paper, the bow, the ribbons. It's got little sprinkles on it. And you're like, oh my God, that's so beautifully wrapped. Now, the truth is you want to know what's inside that gift, right? <laughs> And so when I shared that with the audience, this guy yells out, yeah, not only that, we're going to throw away the wrapping paper anyway. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I am in no way devaluing the importance of having a great logo and all the aesthetics, of course, because anything, anything that you can do to stand out, get noticed, and be remembered is a smart thing. But remember, you want to have what's called a whole brand. Because if all you focus on is the visual stuff, the photography, blah, 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 you will now have, write this down, what's called your brand image. And brand image is only one piece of the puzzle. So exactly what is a brand? A brand is a promise. Hmm. A promise. It's a pledge on your part of an undeniable positive customer experience. Now, please notice the words in gold, promise, pledge, customer experience. Now, I have a couple of adjectives, undeniable, positive. It always has to be positive. However, you may choose a different word rather than undeniable. You may want to say, Jerry, I want my brand experience for my clients and my customers to be fabulous, unsurpassed, exceptional, whatever, right? Just as long as it's something that goes beyond what they expect. Now, the truth of the matter is, like I said earlier, we live in a brand conscious world. People prefer to do business with a brand. We prefer to choose a brand over a product or a service. And the reason why is because with a brand, you know what you're going to get. Now, it's been said that at any given moment, there's over 2 million brands vying for our attention. Everybody, everywhere you look, everybody's trying to sell and market their brand. TV, online, Amazon, brands, brands, brands. It's like, oh, to us, too much. Now, here's a question. Put in the chat box, if you would, please. What was the last brand you bought? What was the name of that brand? I'm just curious. I'm going to open the chat box, Roger. What was the name of the last brand that you bought? I'm just curious. It could be Apple. It could be Starbucks. What is that brand name? So what do we see in there, Roger? I'm looking to see. I'm looking for some brand name. Here we go. Kobe Reader, Logitech. Very good. doTERRA, Hershey's. Excellent. Rolex, Lancome, excellent. Now, Amazon, perfect. Now, please look at the second question. What was the reason that you chose that brand? Put your reasons in there, please. Why did you prefer and choose those brands? What was it due to? Okay, here we go. The quality, the price, They've always been on time. I trust them. They're convenient, performance. I've had great past experience. Excellent. Perfect. Now, oh, like, I like that one, the happy results. That's good. That's good. That's good. So here's the thing. Notice that all of you, when I asked you what the reason was, 
that you chose that brand, all types of reasons, right? Performance, quality, how it tasted, whatever. You all had one thing in common. And I'd like you to please write this word down. What you all had in comma, common was the word because. I chose that brand because. I wanted that brand because. Listen, the reality is that what? There are other choices. There are other options, right? You could have, you could have chosen all types of other products and services, but you chose those brands. Now, the point of that is that in the midst of the calamity that's going on in the world right now, in the midst of what we have all gone through in 2020, as we look towards 2021, it's more important than ever before that your brand has the strongest body, voice, and spirit possible so that you get people to choose you. It always comes down to brand A versus brand B. You know, it's so funny, and I'll share this with you. I don't know, these are American brands, and I don't know which ones you guys have or don't have, but I don't cook. All right, I, I don't cook. I, I'm, I, I'm this bachelor guy living in LA, and I'm actually, ladies, ladies, you'll get a kick out of this. I've actually been taking cooking lessons. <laughs> online. I've, I've been taking this healthy cooking class. So what I want to eat during the pandemic, I'm a takeout and delivery guy. And the brand that I choose for my delivery service most times is called Grubhub. But we have another brand called Uber Eats. We have another brand called DoorDash. I just don't use those brands as much. I prefer Grubhub. Some of you may prefer Coke over Pepsi or vice versa. Some of you may prefer Nike over Adidas. Before the pandemic, when it came to ride share, I, I, I'm a Lyft guy. I prefer to use Lyft over Uber. There's nothing wrong with, with Uber. My point is that your focus must be strategically to achieve what you see in the upper left-hand corner. Those are the magic words, brand preference. You must achieve brand preference by getting people to see you as the smarter, the smarter choice. Now, how do you do that? Well, that leads to strategy number two, which is to follow the proper sequence. It's been shown that whenever any owner is seeking to, we got some background noise here. I don't know what that is. It's been shown that when anyone is looking to scale up, expand, or have more impact, you want to adhere to what I call the golden triangle. So if everybody would simply draw a triangle on a sheet of paper, please, and, up, and at the top of the triangle, write the word brand, lower left-hand corner, write the word market, in the lower right-hand corner, please write the word sell. The sequence for expanding, scaling, having more impact. And again, it doesn't matter if you're, if, if how you define having a big brand is seven figures, six figures, or maybe it's not so much about how much money you wanna make, but having a big brand has more to do with the impact that you wanna have or feeling that you're gonna be more fulfilled. Whatever it is, you don't put the cart before the horse. The sequence is brand market sell. You nail down your brand first and then you market and sell the heck out of that brand. It's always branding followed by marketing followed by selling. It's like a three-legged stool. All three legs have to be in place. If one, leg, if one leg is wobbly, if one leg is missing, you're in trouble. But it also suggests that one leg is not more important than the other. Branding is certainly not more important than marketing. Marketing is not more important than selling. Selling is not more important than branding. They're equally important. However, the three have to be brought together and integrated properly in order to have the impact that you wish to have. Now, the way that I separate the three is simply this. The job of branding is to differentiate your company. 
The job of marketing is to get people to do what? Pay attention to what makes you different. To become aware of what makes you special and appealing. To get people to desire that difference. And the job of selling is to get people to pay for that difference. Let me say that again. The job of branding, strategic branding, watch this, is to differentiate you. For you to be able to say in 2021 that there's nobody else like me. And the job of marketing is to get people to notice you so that you're not blending into the background. And the job of selling is to get people to pay for that difference. The way I simply like to put it, which is the title of this presentation, in case you're wondering where I got that from, is this. The job of branding is to get you known, marketing will get you found, and selling will get you paid, okay? You got to get known, you got to get found, and you got to get paid. We're all in business. It's about being seen, being heard, and making money. Now, in a big picture sense, there's three levels to this thing called branding. Because like I said, it's, there's, you know, there's a lot of people who say they do branding. And I should, I, I should create a joke. You know, three people walk into a, into a bar and they're asked, what do you think branding is? And they co each come up with three different reasons, right? Three different definitions. I mean, here's, th here's the thing. Now, remember, this is all I've been doing my entire adult life, okay, is branding, all right? So, so grab this, please. There's many layers to branding, okay? But there's three primary levels. Level number one is called strategic branding. That means, write this down, please. That means making sure that you have a solid, strategic, multi-layered foundation that contains all the key strategic brand elements that otherwise make up what's called your brand architecture, okay? And all those components have to come together so that you can have what's called a standalone brand. Very, very important given what's going on today in the world and how everybody is now online. You have to have a standalone, one of a kind brand so that you can basically, after it's all put together, say the right things the right way to the right people. The technical term for level one is called your brand strategy, okay? And that becomes your blueprint that you build out from. This is like building a house. You start with the architect, you architect creates the blueprint, right? Okay, then you go to level two and that's called visual branding. So if in level one, the goal is to give your brand the strongest body, voice and spirit possible, the goal in level two is to bring that to life, to breathe more life into your brand by expressing the uniqueness, watch this, of your brand visually. So in home construction, once the architect creates the blueprint and it goes to who? It goes to a builder, right, in the next phase or the next level. And what does that builder do? The builder is gonna bring in subcontractors plumbers, electricians, and carpenters to build a house, right? In my world, my version of those subcontractors are your marketing people. So now you bring in your marketing team, someone to do your website, someone to do your social media, someone to do your design work, publicity, do set up your podcasting program, radios, SEO, and on and on and on. And however, the visual work that they do in phase two, level two, has to be anchored in level one so that you have, write this down, what's called brand synergy. I always tell people to write it down, Roger, because once you turn 21, you know, if you don't write it down, you forget. So once you create all that work in level two, it's got to be anchored in the foundation in level one so that you have brand synergy or brand congruency. Because in the absence of that, if you've ever worked with marketing people, if they don't have a foundation, a brand strategy to root their work in, then what brand marketing people love to do is sell you ideas, sell you shiny objects. Don't get me started on that one. I'll keep moving. And then you go to level three 
which is called social media branding. And that's the one that's emerged over the last, I'd say five to 10 years. So you start from level one and you build your way up because everything has to work together so that you, once you build it out creatively and you implement, now your marketing is going to require fewer impressions to be effective. So therefore $1 works like $5 and you get a higher return on your marketing investment because you are now marketing and selling a brand. And I cannot tell you how many people I've come across who will say to me, oh no, Jerry, I've got a brand. Look, here's my business card. I got a logo, I got pretty colors. You ought to see my website. And I go, no, you have logos and a pretty color and a nice looking website. That's called brand image. And that's not the game anymore. It takes more than that, okay? So now in the midst of that, the lesson here is simply this, don't put the tile down before the cabinets are up, okay? Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't put the cart before the horse. Man, I tell you, Roger, I was, um, I was speaking somewhere and this guy came up to me. He said, Jerry, what you shared about your levels of brand development are spot on. I have wasted more time, money, money and energy, lost dreams, and hopes and whatnot in level two on marketing stuff that did not work. I got two black eyes and a bloody nose to prove it. Come on, be real with me. Come on, somebody. And another woman came up to me though, and she said, you know what? I appreciate what you do. I get what you do. You do the upfront thinking. You let other people do the decorating. I go, you got it. I said, sometimes I got to go in there and tear it down and build it back up with you. She says, that's okay. I appreciate that. Because great brands are built strategically and not visually. That's the thing. Okay. All right. Now, having said that, let's go on to strategy number three. Claim your space. What do I mean? It's very important today that you are looked upon, as I said earlier, as a one of a kind brand, a brand that commands, a brand that allows you to shout three important things. And that is, write this down, distinction, compassion, excuse me, distinction, passion, and commitment. In my 30 plus years of being in business for myself, I've learned that there's three levels that we can all play at. I'm gonna throw this in for free, Roger, because I like you, Roger. I, got, I love getting Roger to smile. Ain't great, look at that smile. I've learned that the, there's three levels we can play at as entrepreneurs. Level one, me too. Write that down. Me too is someone who's not in a class of their own. Me too is if, if I were to go to some of your websites, if I were to go to any of your communication platforms and I went to one of your competitors' platforms, or if I looked at other people that you're competing up against, if I see that you offer something that appears remotely similar to someone else, I have now taken you from what's called untapped market space, blue ocean market space, and now I'm putting you in shark infested Red Ocean, where you are now forced to compete on price. And the moment someone feels that you're not offering something that is unique, fresh, and original to them, they will put you and slot you, like I said earlier. Am I right? Because now they see you as being an imitator. Write that down. Me too equals imitator. They see you as just being another slice in the loaf, another penguin in the flock, another sheep in the herd, because they've labeled you as being generic and they've commoditized you. And once that happens, you are now forced to compete on price. You guys know what I'm talking about. Some of you get those phone calls. How much do you charge? Give me a quote. What's your fee? 
And brands like Starbucks and Nike have shown us the products they offer are less important than the brands they market and sell. Because with a brand, you seize control over how people see you. The second level you can play at is called me different, okay? That's, that's someone who says to me, no, Jerry, I'm not like everybody else. My brand is great. My brand is awesome. My brand is beyond excellent. My brand is, is a rock star brand. I'm not like everybody else. And I go, really, prove it to me. Because what I look for is, write this word down, is whether or not your brand is relevant. The most successful brands today have achieved what's called a high level of importance and relevancy. Because what you are saying and how you present yourself, the words you're using, your messaging, and all the core elements that make up a strong brand puts you in elite category. And so there've been so many brands that started off as rock star brands that quickly died on the vine because they lost their relevancy. Does the name MySpace ring a bell? Whatever happened to Blockbuster? Who in the world ever thought Blockbuster would go out of business? Radio Shack. AOL, BlackBerry, the retail chains in America going out of business because of who? Amazon. And so what's happening today in the midst of this turbulent global marketplace is that a lot of people who think that they're putting out something fresh and original, their perception is you're, you're an impersonator. The level you want to play at is called me only, where you can say I'm the only humma humma that does humma humma. Look, look, folks, there are people today have lots of choices and they know it. And so if you're if you're not presenting yourself, I'm not talking visuals. That's easy. I'm talking about the heart of a brand the soul of your brand, your flavor, your essence. If you, don't, if you don't stand out for the right reasons, then you're just gonna blend in with everybody else. So I really believe, read this slide, that in 2021 especially, a well-received brand that will result in strong growth requires more than simply listing services showing stuff you sell or having a few bullet points of what you do. It requires careful planning, in-depth thinking, and positioning your brand as a certain something special that will reach, engage, and close more customers. The fact of the matter is that you strategically can make a choice. You don't have to be like everybody else. I cannot tell you how many times in my conversations and interactions with an array of business owners from selling widgets to selling services, oh my God, they have a mindset where it seems as if they look at their industry and they say things, I'm not saying this about you guys, but they say things like, well, this is, this is the way everybody else does it. This is how it's normally done in my industry. I looked at this other person's website. I looked at this other person's social media campaign. This is what everybody else is doing. And so your goal must be to do what? Deviate, not conform. There are billions of people on the planet, lots of competitors, but not one of them has your fingerprints because there's only one you. And the fact that you are part of the Vancouver Business Group says to me, because of this man, that you are perpetually valuable, rare, and special. And if some of you are spiritual, if I may just drop a line on you real quick, is that okay? Because I'm not, I, they call me the brand and evangelist, but let me just say this. In order for your God to get a blessing to you, he's got to be able to bless others through you. 
But the only way he can bless others through you is if no other business looks like you or sounds like you. Roger, I should have gotten two shots, an amen, and a hallelujah on that one. I, I better go. I better go. I'm going to start preaching here in a minute. So it may be time for some of you all to go against the flow. It may be time for some of you all to paint outside the line, step outside the non-dots, and not try to fit in. Because unless you are distinct, you risk being extinct. Write this down. I was born to stand out, not blend in. Because when you make the strategic decision that you're going to innovate and not imitate, you are now realizing that you have certain skills that are important. You've got a craft, an expertise that's marketable. But the key, the two key words here are distinction and unique. You've got to make that decision that you're not going to be the same as everyone else in your space and that you are going to put something out into the world that's the only one of its kind. Because at the end of the day, what all of you have to be able to say to someone who's interested in working with you is to start off a sentence that says, what sets me apart from others is, unlike others in my area of specialty, what I do different is, what separates me from others is, and you've got to be able to say that in seven seconds or less, okay? Because consumers listen in actual seven to 10 second intervals. If you can't hit it correct and nail it right out of your words and on your website and on your platforms and communicate it and articulate it in such a way where you excite, delight, and ignite people, then they're, they're listening for something else. And meanwhile, they're putting you into a box. So what's the point? It's been shown in branding that people don't buy products or services. They don't really buy brands. What people are really buying from you is one of four things. Number one, will you solve a problem that I have? I've got this painful, annoying, aggravating problem that's driving me crazy, my family crazy, my team crazy, my company crazy. Can you make it go away? Number two, can you give me a better outcome? What do I mean? Well. This is what I'm presently doing. This is what I've done in the past. This is what I'm thinking of doing. This is what someone suggested that I do. Can you, Vancouver, can you, BBC, can you give me a better outcome? So therefore, what I need to hear from you and all I really want to hear from you are the advantages that you over that you offer over and above the rest of the competition that positions you as being top shelf in panache. Number three, can you perform a miracle in my eyes? Think about 2020, everybody. Think about all the people right now who are hurting. See yourself as someone, perhaps, who has a skill set, a gift, something to offer the world that allows you to say to that person, I can reverse and turn around your situation. I can turn your midnight into day. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been shown that one of the strongest strategic components of a brand is to say that you can make the impossible possible. When you can say to someone that the intention of your work, the commitment of your work, the stand that you are in the world through this vessel that you've been given called your brand is being able to bring forth possibilities that people thought were impossible. Your ability to create a better future than anybody ever imagined. Your commitment to bring forth a future that is not limited by their past. That's what people get excited about. That's what people will pay for in great amounts. 
When you look at all these folks today that are creating these multi-million dollar brands, I know, I study them, I know what's going on out there. Services and products, multi-million dollar brands in 12 months, 24 months. Why? Because they dare to be different. They dare to say something and promise something and be known for something that was unique and fresh and original, not sounding like everybody else. And so when you can say to someone that perhaps you can make the impossible possible in their eyes, oh my God, that's called miracle branding, you all. Now, the extreme of that is when people sell what's called the fantasy of the brand, <laughs> okay? What does that mean? Oh, I'll show you how to lose 20 pounds in 20 days without going hungry, ta-da. I'll show you how to get rid of your belly fat in 10 days, whoa. I'll show you how to get rid of your migraine headache in five minutes. Wow, guys, use the app machine and you can have a six pack app in just 30 days. Sit on the couch and use the app machine, right? <laughs> so that's the extreme of it, but you get my point, right? And the fourth thing that people pay for is the emotional payoff you provide. Hmm, think about this for a second. I want you to think about your best customers for a moment. Think about the negative emotions that they were experiencing that you made go away. People don't want to feel stressed out. They don't want to worry. They don't want to feel overwhelmed. There's all these negative human emotions that we all have. People buy brands that will get rid of those emotions. Roger, one time when I was at PNG, I used to co-manage a little brand that some of you all may have heard of called Cascade Detergent. Or automatic dishwashers. And here's what we would do. We would have someone reach into a dishwasher, pull out a glass, hold it up to a light source and go, oh my God, spots. I can't put these glasses out. I got company coming in 30 minutes. My mom will be here in 15 minutes. What am I going to do? The sky is falling. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then we would say, well, you should have used Cascade. <laughs> Because Cascade gets your dishes virtually spotless. Now, what's my point? We found that through research. You want to know what was the major, write, write these words down, purchase motivator? Because you have to pivot your brand around what's called your purchase motivator, just so you know. You know what it was for, for Cascade? People did not want to feel embarrassed by how their dishes look coming out of the dishwasher. <laughs> So we created this branding campaign called No Embarrassing Moments and shot our sales through the roof. So when you take a look at these four things, think about it. Your brand should be positioned to say that you will either get rid of a problem, improve outcomes, perform a miracle, or provide some kind of emotion of payoff to your target audience. And if you tie a ribbon around it, name it, frame it, blab it, and grab it, be in it, and walk in it, it spells sizzle. It spells your hot, undeniable benefit to your customer because nowadays you got to sell the sizzle and not the steak. You got to sell the bubbles and not the champagne. You got to sell the whiff of the coffee and not the coffee. Come on with me, Canada. You know what I'm talking about. You're the land of all of that. Okay? So here's your, mon here's your money slide. Write this down, asterisk this, slide number 44, money slide. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Ask yourself, I want you to think for a moment. I want you to think about your best clients, the ones you love the most, the ones that are making you say, Jerry, if I could have more like him, Jerry, if I could have more like her, Jerry, if I could have more like them, I want more of them. Now, here's the million dollar question. Think about why they came to you. And I'm not talking about a referral. No, 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 no. What was the underlying purchase motivator that caused them to retain your services? Specifically, what were they sick and tired of putting up with? What wasn't working that they wanted to have work better? What would they like to change or what did they want to change for the better? Said another way, what was the biggest complaint 
that they had, which made them come to you because the two ideal customers are either pain aborters or pleasure seekers, but usually the ones that you want to ramp up around the golden triangle in 2021 and beyond 2021 are the ones who feel that he or she is not well because they want your brand as what? The, the ultimate healing thing they've been looking for. Are you with me? And so from that standpoint, you need to know what your core brand differentiators are. I want you to have a shift right now, a mind shift. I want you to, to move from this thing called services because I loved how you all were introducing yourself. However, I got to give you some feedback. I kept hearing services. I kept hearing services. The moment you tell someone that you have services, they put you in red ocean, shark infested waters because now you're not distinguishing yourself because I said you got to shout distinction, commitment, and passion. So these are just a few to kind of stimulate you because I want to give you some real ideas here. These are some that I've created for some of my clients and students in the past that really helped ramp things up for them. Oh, not though. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> I forgot I had this in here. Okay, wait a minute. This is good. I'll get to those in a second. Okay, check this out. These are big brands. I, I wish I had helped them. Here's the deal. People buy what's called the idea of the brand not what the brand does. Write this down. Tell people who you are, not what you do, okay? FedEx does not sell overnight delivery. What they sell is absolutely reliable next day delivery. Martha Stewart, ladies, I wanna to talk to you for a second. Lady, the Martha Stewart brand has been about what? Not home decoration and all. It's around what? The core perfection. And ladies, do you remember when Martha Stewart first came on the scene? What she became known for? It was, it was what? How to set a table. And then she expanded throughout every room in the house, outside the house. Everything that has to do with her house is the Martha Stewart brand because she's known for what? The core perfection. Crunch Gym sells making fitness fun. LegalZoom.com sells low-cost online legal services. Janitor and the Drum sells industrial strength, strength cleaning. I don't have Airbnb up here, but they don't sell. They don't sell. Oh, I think I do have them. No, no, no. They don't sell home rentals, but Airbnb sells as belonging anywhere. Nike doesn't sell sneakers and, and, and merchandise. What they sell is belief. Going all the way back to Air Jordan, when people thought that they put on Air Jordans, they could be like Michael Jordan, okay? So here's my point. Look at this. When you ask yourself, where's the complaint? Where's the void? Where can you, what, ask yourself, let me put it this way. People want A, B, and C from you or someone like you, but they're settling for D, E, and F. Can you say to someone, I've got the A, B, and C you've been looking for that you have not been able to find to date? And it usually revolves around a complaint. These two young guys created something called Black Tux Online, the blacktux.com. They said, what we sell is the perfect suit meets the perfect rental experience online. Why is that? Because most guys hate going to a retail store to rent a tuxedo. Those of you who wear eyeglasses like me, are any of you besides me sick and tired of paying 500, 800 or thousand dollars for a pair of glasses? These two young, these four guys out of college, Roger, 23, 24 years old, whatever it was, created a multi-million dollar brand in their twenties around the idea of designer eyewear at a revolu revolutionary price and called it Warby Parker. And now they got retail stores all across the place because they found a way to eliminate this void, this, this problem in the distribution channel that allowed them to get designer eyewear at a revolutionary price. DollarShadeClub.com guys, some of you remember him, his crazy commercials. He said, what I sell is high quality razors to your door for a few bucks a month. He sold the brand for $5 billion in five years. The question is, where's your gap? 
So some that I created here, that's what I was trying to get to, a performance-based business coach. I got her to say, I help high-tech companies, excuse me, I help high-tech employees find themselves, feel bad, and create a career they love. I'm not selling business coaching. I got a, cri a crisis planner to say, I remove the overwhelm and worry that comes from being blindsided when the unexpected happens. And I got an intuition expert, life coach, and psychic to say, I help women tap into their inner essence, to dump the stress and reawaken to the magic of life. Got a sales trainer to say, I provide a simple, systematic, and systemic process to grow sales and to create more value. Wait, did that sound a lot sexier than saying I do sales training? And my God, never say someone to someone that you do life coaching. I got this person to say, I create your self-image to be the masterpiece you are so you can step into the light side of life. And a parenting coach to say, I eliminate the everyday stress and pressures of being a parent. And then here are a few more. I prevent IT problems, bite size scalable business solutions. We make sure your loved ones get transported safely. Got a certified health coach to say, I reverse prediabetes, a web person to say, I get your website developed in 30 days. Why is that? Because most of them seem to take 30 months. And I got a locked optimization coach to say, I help people maintain their calm, their cool, and avoid hysteria. <laughs> We're wrapping up now. So the fourth thing I want to do is to create your anthem. I said there were three levels of play at me too, me special, and then there's me only. And that's the level that I'm inviting each of you to play at. Because when you are at the me only level, you have made the decision to innovate and not conform. You have made that decision to not be an imitator or an impersonator. So you wanna be able to say in 2021 and there on out, my brand is the only hama hama that does hama hama. Everybody go like this, ka-ching, ka-ching. You wanna be a me only brand. Say this out loud, ain't nothing cookie cutter about me. Okay, you cannot be perceived as being like everybody else. I once had, Roger, I had this, um, this young couple came into one of my, um, my workshops and they asked what I did and all that. And I, you know, I said, well, I help with the messaging and all of that. I said, well, the main thing I do is I'm gonna make you eat your vegetables. <laughs> see you all, see most of the people who come to me they don't, they, they, I, this is the hard stuff that I do. Like, that, like the young lady said, let other people do the decorating with all the foo-foo and all that stuff. So I said, well, what do you all do? They said, we do marriage counseling. I go, oh my God, marriage, oh my God. You can, can you get more red ocean commodity generic than that? So I got them to say that we're the only counselors that has a make love last system. For married couples, most of the United States, who not only want their marriages to flourish, but for he or she to know, you're the only one for me. In an era where so many people wonder, is true love even possible for me? Are you feeling me, Canada? Because then you move to strategy number five, which is to create what's called your statement of mastery, which is your irresistible brand promise. Remember I said earlier, a brand is a promise a promise of an experience, the promise of an outcome, the promise of the problems you're gonna solve, the, the better advantages you provide and on and on and on. So one time, now remember I don't cook, but I will clean. <laughs> so one time I was looking for a bathroom cleaner. So I go down to the store and I, I come across this brand called Scrubbing Bubbles. And right on the back of the package, it said, we work hard so you don't have to. I said, that's the brand for me. <laughs> I just want to go squirt, squirt, spray, spray, and clean the thing. And then a little scrubbing bubble. Okay. Time Warner promises one hour window arrivals, arrival windows here in the United States. Time Warner, Roger, if you if, if, if you had to have Time Warner to come out to your place and, and you asked them, well, what time can you get here? They used to say, well, it'd be somewhere between sun up and sundown. <laughs> so they finally figured it out. We ought to have one hour arrival windows and tell you how long it would take so you don't have to wait all day before your appointment shows up. And LifeLock promises to detect, alert, and fix identity theft, protect with the best. 
So we want to create your statement of mastery. Now, these are just opening sentences for statements of mastery. If I had more time, I could give you some real, because they're very meaty, but I got a landscaper contractor to say, listen, I promise to create a personal paradise in your own backyard. Oh my God, a typo, I gotta fix that. I forgot the word yard. I just wrote this for Rodney, he should be giving me a high five. I got a real estate broker to say, I will make you the queen of your castle. Now imagine ladies, if he said, I will make you the queen of your castle as opposed to I'm a real estate agent and I'll get your house sold. I got a financial planner to divorce women to say, I promise to get you on the road to independent financial growth. Mm. So you got to have snap, crackle, and pop. You got to make it sound juicy. You got to make it sound sexy, okay? And how, and because why? Because people make decisions emotionally and they justify it with logic. So you got to speak to the heart and not the head. And if I come across some of your land, some of your websites or your marketing materials, if I listen to the words out of your mouth, if I read your stuff, is it going to sound too freaking logical? And it could be that some of you all, it may not, it could be that the reason why you're not closing like you really want to close is because you're not using the kind of language that allows people to really, really want to work with you. So write this down. You have to engage in what's called emotional-based messaging, which means simply that you put words out verbally and non-verbally that are designed to connect engage and entice, okay? Connect, engage, and entice. And then the last strategy is this, establish your status as an elite brand, which means you have to have what's called that secret sauce. One of the things that has been proven in branding, especially when you are branding services, because the way you brand a service is very different than how you brand a product. So you think about it. If you've got a tangible item, what, does the, what do we have the advantage of, of doing before we even have to pay for the product? We can sample it, right? We can check it out. We can see, taste, touch, smell, or hear that product. We can test drive it. We can take the kids into the pet shop and play with the pup if we want to. We get to do what we want to do to try out that product. Now think about it. When you're branding yourself, expertise, skills, talent, services, and on and on and on, you can't simply say to someone, well, I'm good at what I do. Trust me, no, you can't, you don't, you can no longer just say I have services because that's too generic because the moment, so I'm giving you a distinction here. When you are branding and marketing and then marketing and selling any kind of intangible in the eyes of your buyer, you're selling vapor to them. You're selling the invisible. They can't put their hands around it, right? They can't see, taste, touch, smell, or hear it. And there was a professor at the Harvard Business School, and I'm, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing him, when he once said, Dr. Dr. Uh, Theodore Levitt, he said, the biggest challenge with branding, marketing, and selling any kind of intangible, in other words, any kind of service, skill, talent, ability, expertise, your gift to the world. He said, the biggest challenge is that the customer does not know what they're getting until they do not get it. At which point dissatisfaction dwells. So what's the solution? The solution is to take your intangible and tangibilize it. Now, Roger, I made that word up. It's my word. It's a cool word, right? Tangibilize your intangible, which means take your skill set and make it real in their mind as if it were a physical product. Well, how do you do that? You convert it into your secret sauce, your system, your process, your method, the steps that you take to produce the results you say you can produce. So now, read the top of the page. This is your because that I shared at the beginning. When I asked each of you what some of your favorite brands were and why you chose those brands, you had a because reason. So your because statement becomes that thing that allows people to believe that you can do what you say you can do. Do some of you remember KFC back in the day before it was known as KFC? It was known as what? Excuse me, before, yeah, it, it was known as what? The Colonels, 
known for something called the original secret recipe, which was the magical blend of 11 herbs and spices. Here in America, we have a gasoline called Chevron. And they say, well, what makes Chevron different is we use something called Tecron because of Tecron, your car is going to get better mileage so your car will be happier. Now, why is that? Because our gasoline is the same. They differentiate through what? Their additives. And one time I was looking at a, at a TV commercial for Bounty Paper Towel. And right there on the screen, it said, Bounty, the quicker picker upper. <laughs> Let the skill, let the spills begin. And, and, and I'm not kidding. They took a paper towel in the TV commercial, spread it open and said, Bounty absorbs twice the liquid than any other paper towel because we have something called trap in lock technology. And I go, oh, okay. <laughs> What's my point? You have to give people permission to believe you can do what you say you can do especially if you're offering services, especially if your goal is to scale up next year in the midst of all this craziness. And last, I'll just leave, I'll just leave you with this. Every industry has giants. Every industry has leaders. We can all look at whoever it is that we're competing against or who we think we're being compared to. And there's always going to be someone who's doing better than we are. And for some of us, we wonder why that is and how come after all these years, I don't have this to show for it. After all the sacrifices, I don't have that to show for it. And one thing I've learned, aside from the fact that you never look left, that you never look right, is that you never look in the rearview mirror at our past mistakes and disappointments and setbacks, the would have's and could have's and should have's. You are where you are right now in this conversation with me for a reason that I was brought to speak to you at the end of this year. Keep your eyes on the prize. Know that what's coming is better than what's been. Believe in your heart that the best is in front of you and the worst is behind you. That your tomorrow will be better than your yesterday and that next week can be better than last week. And don't fret about the big people, right? The giants, he and she, who seem to be rocking your industry. Don't try to be like David taking on Goliath. You can't out soup Campbell's. You don't try to out connect Apple TV or Facebook. You don't try to out flavor Wiggly. You don't try to out coach Tony Robbins and you don't try to out cool Kool-Aid. You run your race and you make sure that you have the strongest brand you can coming in to 2021 by making it a priority to first create your conveyor belt. So I gave you six strategies. Have a brand, not just the visuals. Follow the proper sequence. Claim your space as being in a class of your own. Create your anthem of being a me only brand. Create your statement of mastery of an irresistible promise and establish your status as being elite, best in class, knowing that you were born to stand out and not blend in. It has been an honor to be here. And if any of you would like to have a brainstorm session with me, have me muscle test your brand, I am welcome to do it. I'll guarantee you this, you have a conversation with me, I'm not gonna try to sell you anything because I don't do that. At this stage in my life, I don't have to do that. But I'm more than happy to take a look at what you have and we can do some kind of um, brainstorm. And if you wanna show me your website or whatever you have, text me, call me. I'm also on WhatsApp, as I mentioned. But again, thank you so much for being here. It's been my honor. Good night. Well, Jerry, on behalf of all the participants, I assure you it has been our honor, our privilege to sit through 
we've gone way over time, but it's been worth it. And uh, I thank you on the participants in my own and VBN's behalf for sharing so graciously, so generously. Uh, you are the man. Oh, thank thank you. you so, thank you. so much. Yeah, and, and those Q&As that I promised, we'll do them one-on-one -on -one by phone. How's that? <laughs> so you get me on the phone, you can ask me anything. <laughs> Given that this is our last meeting this year, I want to wish you all a very, very happy, wonderful, prosperous Christmas. Uh, stay safe. Uh, our festivities for New Year's are going to be constrained, but we can enjoy it anyway. I look forward to our ride, our journey together in 2021. And Jerry, you're a very fitting person to close out this year for VBN. Good night, one and all. All right. Good night. Thank you, Roger. You're a great guy. Good night, everybody. Stay safe.